Hello, hello everyone. I hope that you are having a fabulous start to your 2023 and thank you for coming to my little chatty sassy corner here on YouTube. If you haven't already done so, make sure and hit that red subscribe button down below and make sure that you have entered my giveaway on my what I got for Christmas 2022 video. I'll have that link below in the description. Today is going to be what is on my wish list for 2023. Now I have like an overall really big spreadsheet of like 30 years worth of things that I would love to get. But today these are going to be the things that I'm focusing on more specifically for 2023. Cause obviously like you can't get everything that you want all at once. There are things that I have on there that are like overall goals or things like that, that I have plans to get one day, but not necessarily right now. And so making this video and making this overall list for myself helps me really sort of prioritize where I want my money to go this year and things that I'm really more focused on bringing into my collection and why I want to bring them into my collection. So with that being said, obviously like not all the stuff that's on this list is going to make it to my closet this year, but we've got shoes, accessories, clothing, jewelry, and of course bags. So let's get started. So first up, I'm going to do jewelry because it is actually the shortest thing on my list this year. There is one thing that I've really been eyeing and it is actually a retired David Yearman piece. And that's going to be this really beautiful two-tone triple cable bracelet. I think that this is just fabulous. And this typically will come up on the pre-love market between about $600 to $700. And I just feel like that this is a really nice option because it gives you that stacked look that I love doing with my Yerman bracelets, but it's so symmetrical and put together while also like having some of that thickness that I feel like that it would add something to my collection while still blending in with the rest of my collection as well. And if you know me and my channel, you will know that I love David Yerman and my David Yerman pieces. So that is the one jewelry item that I have on my wish list for this year. Now the other category that is pretty short is clothing and that's because this year one of the things I'm really focused on is slimming down my closet to reflect what I actually enjoy wearing, what my actual style is, and then only adding in pieces that fit with that. Um, one of the things that I do on New Year's Eve is that I go through my closet and so I have a whole bunch of stuff that I need to list for sale on Poshmark. But the first piece that I would like to add to my collection this year is going to be the tan Max Mara long belted wrap coat. Like when it comes to wrap coats, Max Mara is the classic one. I'm looking at going with the S Max Mara version that's on Satire because that usually you see those come up between six to $700, which is way, way better than and like, I think it's the $3,500 price for the regular Max Mara version. That's just too much for me to feel comfortable spending on a coat right now in my life. But buying the S Max Mara version on Satire, I feel like is definitely totally doable. Now, the other piece that I'm looking at is definitely not budget friendly and it is definitely not as classic, but I think it is a classic piece for the brand. And that is going to be the Fendi Brown Canvas Zucca Print Go-To Belted Jacket. Now, I know Cassie Thorpe has this. I think Meredith has this as well from Living Lux with Meredith. I love this piece on everyone that I've seen it on. I think that it is so versatile in the different ways that you can style it, but it is over $2,000. And so that's a lot. Um, but I'm also not even sure if the jacket itself would be small enough to fit me because I am a very petite person. I'm only 5'2 and 100 pounds. So finding things that look really great on other people, a lot of times they swallow me and don't fit me as well. So this is one that first I would need to try it on. And then I would probably honestly look to see if one ever popped up in my size on Satire because of the fact that this is such a pricey piece that I'm not sure that it's necessarily one that will get added in based on other priorities that I have on this list but it's certainly something that I'm eyeing for this year. Now, the really, really fun category, and what a lot of people think is the best category on wishlist, and that is bags. So the first bag that I'm eyeing is something that I'm like 
99% sure is coming into my collection and it would have to be like something popped up that just really knocked it off the list but it is the YSL Lou camera bag in the black leather with the silver hardware and I have been wanting to reach for a bag like this and pull out to use for most of this past year and this is the color combo that I know that I want because when in my head I'm thinking about styling outfits I'm like oh man I'd love to have a black bag in this size with this silver hardware and so I know that this is a bag that's going to get use. I have tried it on in store so I know that I'm happy with how it looks. I know that I'm happy with how it will function and how it will fit my stuff because I've tried all my stuff in it and so this is definitely going to be a purchase that's coming soon. I am also selling my Cabas piano and so definitely want once that is sold, that will bring a good amount of money in to my luxury budget so that I feel super good because like I don't want to wipe out my whole luxury account and not have anything to spare. So that should help give me some extra cushion that way I feel totally comfortable getting this bag. Now the big surprise for me, the bag that is on my list because I never thought that I would have this type of a bag on a wish list and that's going to be a tote bag and it is the Foray La Page Daily Battle Zip Tote. They've come out with a size 35. That's the size that I want. I want it in the gray because then it'll be super neutral with whatever I'm wearing. I have loved using my Neverfull GM since my friend gave me hers and that happened earlier in 2022 but what I have found is that there are some days where I don't need to carry quite as much work wise and in those cases the Neverfull is really a bit too massive. I've also discovered that there are some times where particularly like when I'm traveling on a plane I really wish that there were a zip across to keep things a bit more secure and so the Frey La Page Zip 35 is the right size that it is a little bit smaller but can still hold a really good amount. It has that zip top for security. So while I'll definitely still be using my Neverfull, this gives me a, another option tote wise. Plus it adds a different brand into my collection and that's one of my goals for this year is adding in pieces from brands that I don't have or that I maybe only have one or two pieces from. Now there are a couple of other bags that I am eyeing and that I'm highly interested in that could potentially bump the tote bag down my priority list since I do have the Neverfull that does work for me. And the first of those is that I've discovered I really like colorful bags. And I've always like really liked colorful bags on other people, but I was like, oh, like I'm a neutral bag girl. I don't want a colored bag. But then I started carrying my Hyson Rev mini maestro bag and I love having that bright pop of color. And one of my favorite colors is green. And I have been loving the like really bright greens that have been coming out. Like there's the, um, acid kiwi from Bottega in their mini loop or maybe going with like the Fendi acid green in the soft baguette trunk or a mini peekaboo. I would probably be looking at all of these on the pre-loved market and so it's sort of just kind of looking for that right bright green bag to come up because I'd really like something that is a smaller bag that I can just throw on when I'm like running around doing something in town that's not so big but still packs a punch with the color because I do have my Sin Rep bag for when I need a bigger bag with a pop of color but I feel like that that sort of smaller size bag in the acid green would work super well. Now also talking about color the Fendi multicolor baguette that Meredith sold hers I believe Dale sold hers recently I love, love, love this bag. I've been in love with this bag and I feel like that it has enough neutral with just enough color coming in that it would work really well with a lot of my collection and with a lot of my outfits because of the fact that my outfits are so neutral that that would give me a pop while not being like so massive of a color pop. Now, the one thing about this bag is that it is still selling at least at like new prices and typically Fendi bags don't hold their value that well. This one is and so I may want to wait just a little while longer for this particular um, for this particular bag to sort of lose more of its popularity so that people who have pre-loved ones I can get a hold of and not be paying for like a brand new bag price that's a fabric bag. Um, I'll probably at some point talk to Rod from the Lux Theory about sourcing me one because it's still a really hard bag to get a hold of. But 
it's a very expensive bag right now it's like three thousand us dollars on the resale market and so there are some other priorities on this list which is why this one may not happen this year but i'm putting it out here because who knows maybe i will find that perfect deal and be able to add this bag to my collection and i don't actually have anything fendi so i feel like that this would be a really fun fendi bag to add for me now let's talk accessories. So I am a big baseball cap lover and there are two on my list I'm sort of thinking about and that's going to be the Celine Triumph corduroy blush hat or the YSL New Era monogram cap in the black and white. So I really do think that I would wear both of these but Again, this is not like a high up on my priority list. This is something that I think I would use and enjoy, but this may be something like I asked for for like birthday or Christmas or something like that. And it may also be something that towards the end of the year, I'm like, you know what, like, let's get this. I haven't spent as much as I thought that I would. So this is definitely an item that is on the list, but a lower priority for this year. But one of the things that is probably highest up on my list, or at least in the top three or four, is going to be the Hermes reversible belt. I'm wanting to get the black atoupe combo in the 24 width with the gamma buckle and silver. So this is a very specific combination. First up for the belt, I do have my black with the gold Gucci that's a thicker belt. I'm wanting to go thinner than that width, which is why I have the 24, but I do still really like the black because I do want a black with silver hardware belt. And then I really like the Etoupe because it's a really good neutral that I feel like I can work into my closet really well. So that is where that combo is coming from. And then with the Gamma Buckle, it's very much equestrian, which very much is me. And it also has still that Hermes H built into it, but it's not like the super in your face Constance H. And so it's a more subtle thing where like, if you know that it's the Hermes, like you know it's the Hermes. If you don't, you just think, oh wow, like that's a really gorgeous leather belt. Plus like, yes, I know it's expensive and it's pricey, but it is reversible. So you are getting two belts in one. So that's definitely something that's pretty well up on my list. And just like the YSL camera bag, I have definitely been wanting to reach for that, wear that, and I haven't had it. Now, the other accessory that I'm strongly considering is going to be the Dyson Corral. So this is the Dyson hair straightener. My air wrap was probably my best 2022 purchase. And I don't really reach my traditional straightener at all because when I go to use my straightener, I just feel it damaging my hair. And even more so since I've been using the air wrap and I don't feel that with my air wrap, I just really don't even touch my straightener at this point because I feel it damaging my hair, even though I want to straighten my hair. So that's why I feel like if I had the Corral, I would definitely use it and why it is on my wish list for 2023. Now, finally is shoes. And shoes is going to be the big one. Shoes is the one where it's going to be hardest for me to prioritize because I really want all these shoes. And first up is that I have discovered my black short boots have like no tread left on them. Like it's, it's bad. Like I'm slipping and sliding in those things all the time now. And they're just like a flat, like essentially no heel boot. And so to replace them, I'm looking at the Christian Louboutin Adoxa 70s because I feel like that this is a good heel height where it does give me some heel, does give me some height, but it's not gonna kill me in the winter. And I think that this is probably going to be the highest priority just because of the fact that I wear short black boots a lot in the winter. And I've realized that my current pair is not safe for the winter anymore. Now, also boot wise is that I'm wanting to get a short pair of Hermes natural colored leather boots and I'm wanting to get them in a lower heel. Again, same reason as with the black pair, but these are like an even shorter heel. The only short brown boots that I have are, I have a pair of bean boots for when it's really bad weather. And then I have a pair of like six inch high heeled boots that I just don't ever wear in the winter because they're six inch high heeled boots and I just don't wear six inch heels anymore. Um, so I am looking at either the, I think it's like the Faltus is what's called. It's the 60 millimeter ankle boot or the Frenchy 50 millimeter ankle boot. Both these are really expensive. They're both around like the $1,500 range. So obviously I'm probably not going to be getting 
both this pair and a Louboutin pair of boots, but it's definitely up there in consideration, particularly since I do wear quite a bit of brown. This would definitely be something that I would use a lot if added into my collection, but I just gotta sort of figure out what those priorities are. So who knows, maybe I'll get both pairs or maybe I'll just go with one of the two, but these are definitely the two boots that I'm eyeing for this year. Now there is another pair of Hermes shoes that I feel pretty sure will probably get added in and that is going to be the Legend Sandals in Gold. So I've put off getting these for two years because they're really pricey, but every other wedge that I've tried just does not come anywhere close to comparing and the quality is not anywhere near what I'm looking for. The look is not anywhere near what I'm looking for. And I just don't want to keep investing in, I just don't want to keep investing my money, like putting a hundred bucks here, putting a hundred bucks there, and the shoe falls apart at the end of the season. I think that at this point, I just need to get the really, really nice Hermes one, bite the price tag and just jump in and do it. And so that will probably be coming sometime in the spring or summer. But the final shoe on my list is more just sort of filling a gap in my collection heel height wise. And that is going to be the Christian Louboutin Kate 85 Slingbacks in a black suede. Now this is such a beautiful, classy, classic shoe, but the real thing that really has me interested in this is that it's an 85 millimeter heel that looks very nice on me. Every other heel in my collection is pretty much between 100 or 140 millimeters. So that's like four to six inches. And I just don't necessarily want to be wearing heels that are that high of a heel height all the time. I do want to have something that's a little bit lower, a little bit more reasonable. And I feel like that these and I feel like that this specific pair of Kate's from Christian Louboutin really kind of fits in well with that and gives me a nicer lower heel option that's not like my white sneakers. And so I think that this is something that again, really fits a gap in my collection, but it is lower on my priority list because I could still definitely wear all my super high heels just fine. And that actually wraps up my 2023 wish list. So what do you guys think that my first purchase should be this year? What is top of your wish list? And make sure if you haven't done so to head over to my Christmas 2022 Amazon gift card giveaway. Make sure to enter that. Link is down there in the description. And I hope that you have a happy 2023 and I'll see you on Friday. Bye.